the NCAA title matches here in Pittsburgh for the first time in more than six decades. Kai, you go into this tournament as the eight seed, but it certainly seemed like you went in confidently, despite the fact that it was going to be a, a difficult draw. What was your thought process going in? What was your confidence level uh, and just mindset as the tournament started? So going in, I really didn't get the chance to look at the bracket because Coach Frey told me not to. He just told me my seed, and then he told me that he basically just told me everybody I would have, like, when the tournament was going on. But going into the tournament, um, my confidence was high because I wasn't really worried about anybody else. I was just worried about myself. And then focusing on myself the entire time and just um, trying to be more relaxed and uh, trying to stay confident throughout the whole process. Miss Charlotte, Keith, you obviously know your son the best. What did you notice in him during the course of the tournament after he defeats the one seed, kind of dominates the four seed in the semifinal round? Uh, you know, what did you notice in terms of him and his confidence or level of calm throughout that week? Basically with me, what, what, what I, I realized, especially after the Marinelli match, because that was kind of like the match that we were really worried about that, you know, I know that would be a real tough one because they had a tough one in Vegas. But uh, once I seen that match and I just seen, you know, just knowing him, I just know that it, it was going to be hard to beat him down there. I prayed through everything. I was nervous from match mm -hmm. one to the end. I, but I knew he had confidence because he kept telling me that he was going to do this and that he could do it. And, and just, it was just really exciting. It was fun and, and, and I had a lot of fun. I walked around down there. I got up early in the morning and I was just walking and I ran into the team when they was on their way into the arena. And I, I just said, hello, and I kept walking. I just, I just knew they were focused. The coaches had them really focused as a team. And, and you know, I could see it and I just, you know, I just, did what parent, I did what I've been waiting to do for a long time, just sit back and be a fan. Yes, I really enjoyed myself as well. Um, just having people come up to you and knowing that you were Makai's mom or you were from Virginia Tech, um, it, was, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> you know, what did you notice in Makai's performance in the bracket before he got there, because when he got to that championship match, it certainly seemed like he was an extremely in an extremely confident place. Yeah, I think I, I think that was a byproduct. Um, you know how he approached that match mentally and the confidence that he went into that match with was a byproduct of the the opponents that he wrestled prior to that how he had competed throughout the course of that tournament you know he went in as the number eight seed typically the number eight seed is not a great place to be right because then you got you have number one seed in the quarterfinals looking at it on paper maybe a lot of people thought that it wasn't a great draw um for for where where we wanted to end up at but i think you know he just came out of the gates and wrestled really well from start to finish of that tournament. And, you know, especially with uh, his victory in the quarterfinals when he knocked off Alex Marinelli from Iowa, who was the number one seed at the event. Um, then in the semifinals, pretty much dominated uh, Evan Wick, who was, I believe, the fourth seed. So, you know, I think Makai was feeling really, really good about the way he was competing and wrestling at that tournament. He had not been scored on and um, really was not that close to being scored on um, throughout the course of the event. It'll be three in a row against Makai Lewis. Tim, who's been a really fun story at these championships. Oh, he's strong, athletic, explosive. He's a gold medalist in the Junior World World Championships. The eighth seed doesn't get to the finals very often, Mike, and he has come right through with impressive wins over the number one seed, Alex Marinelli from Iowa, and then Evan Wick, the All-American from Wisconsin. He is fearless. 
Micaiah Lewis. He needs to be, and he needs to, and he's not scared to wrestle this two-time NCAA champion, Vincenzo Joseph, the only wrestler ever to win titles as a freshman and a sophomore for the Nittany Lions. Let's keep an eye on Lewis throughout the tournament. It seems like where he's most dangerous is with his re-attacks. He'll take advantage of his opponents coming out of position just like that. He'll finish with his takedowns. And for Joseph, needs to be aware of the re-attacks. Why are those difficult to defend? Well, because your opponent is coming back up and trying to get back into their stance and in their position, so it makes them open. So, Nakai Lewis just does a great job of sensing that. He sees where the opening's at as his opponent's resetting and takes advantage of it. Lewis looking to become Virginia Tech's first national champion. He's their third finalist. Devin Carter back in 2014 and Jared Haught in their wrestling room did it a year ago. Did you have conversations with Makai going into the tournament in terms of this is a doable task? This, you know, even though it's not the greatest draw, this is certainly a tournament that you can win. Absolutely, you know, and, and we didn't we didn't talk about the draw. We never talked about the draw being being a negative or the seed being a negative. Um, you know, when we went into that event, we just wanted to make sure that Makai mentally was in a place that his confidence was really high, his belief in himself was really high, and that when he stepped on the mat, um, there was no doubt in his mind that he was going to be victorious. And um, you know, we we had pumped him up and we had uh, talked about that a lot not only with him but we talked about that a lot with a lot of our guys um, just in terms of the mindset of the event and really just focusing on going out and giving great effort and regardless of who the opponent is uh, what round it is uh, who they wrestle for who's sitting in the corner uh, of their opponent you really just have to worry about yourself your preparation staying in the process of preparing for each round of the, the tournament and just trying to stay emotionally very even and, and that's really what Makai did a fantastic job of was maintaining his emotions staying even keel not getting too excited too high or too low and focusing on business and focusing on the process of preparing to compete that weekend so Makai you get to the championship match and it's a well-known opponent in Vincenzo Joseph but you hadn't wrestled him before uh, what were your um, impressions of him going in? What did you know was going to be a challenge as you approached this match? And what was your focal point going in? I knew that he's really good at uh, on his feet, especially getting to his attacks and stuff. And I just knew that I was really good at like defending my legs. So my point like on neutral was basically just to not let him finish on any attacks and not let him get in deep. And then top and bottom, I just was focusing on, of course, like getting to uh, positions where I could get near fall points, like how I did with uh, the cradle. And then bottom, just being able to like relax, run down at bottom, not really uh, panic if like um, he was like starting to get my wrist and like starting to turn me. So I could be able to like get out and just uh, focus on stay in a good position the whole entire match and not really put myself in danger to be like, um, to be down in a match where I have to like struggle and like uh, fight my way back. Obviously with, with Vincenzo, um, he's somebody that I knew well, we recruited, I home visited him. Um, he, he came on an official visit to Virginia Tech. So um, knew him well, had watched him wrestle for a long, long time and was very familiar with uh, where he was good uh, and he's really good in, in a couple positions um, that we knew we kind of wanted to stay away from so you know we went in and, and we talked a little bit about the positions and a couple things that we had seen on video that we felt like Makai needed to be aware of and, and needed to maybe stay away from um, we knew that he was incredibly difficult to take down um, he's got he's a lot like Makai in that sense where He's got tremendously strong hips, and when you getting to his leg is just half the battle, and uh, finishing the actual takedown and scoring your two points is a whole nother um, level of difficulty with Vincenzo Joseph. So, um, you know, it, there was some things, but you, when you when you go into competition at that level, you try not to dwell on 
what your opponent does too much. I mean, you got to be aware of a couple things, but really you want to go out, you want to wrestle your match, wrestle in your positions. You want to be the guy that's dictating the pace. You want to be the guy that's dictating the position. So that's really what we were trying to, to focus on with Makai. What was the environment like being there in the arena? It's just packed. There's tons of Virginia Tech fans. Makai's parents were right there next to the mats. Uh, it just seemed like it was the height of your sport. It, it always is. It, it's a, it's an unbelievable event, uh, especially when you get down to the to the semifinals, quarterfinals, semifinals, and and then obviously the finals when they. They strip it down to one mat. They raise the stage. You wrestle on the platform. Um, you know, they bring the seating in really close. Parents are sitting in the front row. It was in Pittsburgh that year, which I think made it even a little bit more um, intense just because it's such a wrestling crazy area. Um, you know, Makai was competing against uh, uh, an opponent from Penn State who happened to grow up in Pittsburgh too. So there were probably a lot more uh, Penn State and Nintendo Joseph fans than there were uh, Makai Lewis fans, but the Hokie Nation did a fantastic job. I mean, we, we were fortunate. Our seats were, you know, we had really good seats and, and uh, we had a lot of fans up close. And, uh, you know, really just the way the match played out, um, the momentum was on our side for, for, for the majority of the match, if not all of the match. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an incredible event. Uh, something that uh, for me as a coach that I'll never forget. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you cherish being in those situations and having those opportunities. We talk about Joseph's inside trips, the different sets, but he also has very underrated blast double that uh, takes down most of his opponents and from everywhere. There's the reshot that you were talking about, Anthony, by Makai Lewis, and Joseph does a nice job of underhooking and bringing up Makai Lewis. Good action here early. Good defense there by Joseph. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Lewis just senses the right opportunity to get in on that shot off the re-attack. Great mat awareness there. Joseph for Penn State, the Pittsburgh native in the semis. Defeated Josh Shields of Arizona State 3-2, his former club wrestling teammate, to get here to his third straight finals. Makai Lewis already showing he understands that you cannot attack Chenzo straight on. You've got to find the angle and go around him. Tim Joseph is a rarity with what he's done in the Big Ten Championships compared to what he's done at the NCAA Finals. Has never won a Big Ten Championship, <laughs> and yet it, this is the platform that, uh, that, that counts. So losing to Isaiah Martinez a couple of years ago, losing this year to Alex Marinelli. The number one seed who he defeated and then knocked off Evan Wick 5-2 yesterday to get here to the title match. Round one, no points scored. Was that indicative of what you had mentioned in terms of them not wrestling before, in terms of kind of a feeling out process in round one? I think as much as anything, it was indicative of how difficult both of those guys are to score on. Um, I, if memory serves me correctly, I think Makai got to Vincenzo's legs once, maybe twice, got in once nice and deep. But, uh, you know, really couldn't get that close to finishing. And the same holds true, you know, for Makai. And it's, 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 it's more of a style thing than anything is, is that uh, for one of those guys to shoot in, score a takedown offensively on the other guy was going to be difficult to do. And, uh, you know, there, was, there were several attempts. And, uh, you know, it was just hard to execute for both those guys because they're just so good defensively. Um, I was coming out of it like basically on our feet was pretty pretty evenly matched and I felt like a lot of people thought that he would be able to like get one or two takedowns on me going out at first period but um, I was pretty uh, confident going into like the second and third period because I felt like if I could get him tired like how I got other people throughout the tournament that my conditioning was pretty good so I would be able to at least get like one or two scores 
like if I needed to in like the second or third period. So, so yeah, I mean, a 0-0 zero, zero, um, first period was not a shocker. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was, you know, 1-1 one, one at the end of the match and we went to overtime. I mean, we, we definitely weren't rolling that out based on the styles and, and the kind of athletes both those guys are.